a study published by the IEA in March this year shows actually that carbon emissions have been flat over the last three years and that notwithstanding a global you know, growth of our economy. And that really shows that you know, there is, we're going in the right direction but at the same time we also know that you know, flat is not enough. If you really want to go on a pathway that is in line with the two degrees target, we do know that we have to massively scale up uh, the investment in order to meet the needs both in mitigation and adaptation and we have to do that at the speed that is really very quick because otherwise we unfortunately will be missing you know our goals and we will not be able to actually you know meet the, the Paris Agreement goals that uh, all the countries have actually uh, subscribed to. The NDCs are uh, the heart of the Paris Agreement. We are not able to, to really seriously implement the first round of the NDCs. We will never uh, convince countries to come forward with the next round, more ambitious round, which, which would lead us on the right track. So therefore we have to seriously work all together. And that is, that is private sector, that is think tanks, that is development finance institutions, that is governments. So it's actually a huge uh, coordination task. That is, I think, the key of it. I'm the director of climate change programs in Kenya, and one of my major roles is to implement NDCs uh, in the country. And there are some of the challenges that we are facing currently, uh, specifically related to uh, data, because we do not have enough uh, data to start uh, the reporting requirements under the Paris Agreement. Uh, secondly, we also need capacity to develop capacity in terms of uh, uh, data collection, in terms of uh, human resource capacity, in terms of technology. We also need financing to implement uh, these uh, projects and also to, to support uh, capacity development in various sectors of uh, NDCs. And uh, thirdly, uh, because uh, the Paris Agreement came into force too early and uh, the modalities and procedures for implementing some elements of the MDC, NDCs are not clear and therefore as we are trying uh, implementation at home we are also waiting to hear what the outcome of uh, COP23 and COP24 will be in order to fast track our implementation of uh, NDCs. And we are also realizing that uh, there are a lot of challenges when it comes uh, in particular to implementation of uh, adaptation related projects uh, in our NDCs. I think the most important theme that came out of today's set of discussions, it is time to actually start focusing seriously on adaptation and to take that with the same level of seriousness and rigor that we take the mitigation side of the equation. I also think that there's a tremendous amount of effort now being focused on the implementation of the Paris Agreement, not just the aspiration to create it. And moving into action is, I think, the most important part of this conference. I think if we look at the overall range of climate finance activities, it is very interesting to see the evolution over time. When we had the first San Giorgio group, there was a big role for the MDBs and we discussed a lot about the policies that were needed for renewable energy investment. It is very interesting to see that now, six years later, you have in many market segments, not all, but in many market segments, the private sector taking that on almost without any particular form of subsidy or policy support, but just because you know, the economics of investing in renewable energy have shifted so much in this period. Germany has initiated together with, with Morocco a new partnership, the NDC partnership, where we bring together um, ministries uh, on, on, the, on the donor side, both development cooperation and and environment, climate, and also on the, on the developing country side, the finance and planning ministries on the one hand and the environment ministers on, on the other hand. Only if they all work together and if they really understand that the implementation of NDCs is a whole of a government approach and that, that we are really talking about huge investments into the whole economy, uh, we are able to, uh, to um, to be successful in the implementation. And we, in particular, 
need to work, uh, uh, work out concrete investment plans and bring in then the private sector and the private finance, etc. So it's a huge undertaking, we're just at the very beginning of it. I think we're at a really interesting moment in time where the private sector can be very engaged in dealing with the climate change problem. And one of the major ways that that can happen is through disclosure recommendations that are being put out right now by the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosure, the Article 173 mandates in France, and their proposed uh, Senate bill that exists in California also require disclosure of both physical climate risk and transitional risk. That offers the opportunity for investors to start thinking about, in a practical and concrete sense, what the risk of climate change is to existing investments and to start making investments against those issues. Moving forward, I would say very much this element in particular on the mobilization of a private sector is a very important element, both in terms of the objectives that we have, but also on how to do it. And I think the discussions that we're having today are being very useful in that context. Financial instruments, uh, I do think, are extremely important in order to start filling the gap that we see in, uh, you know, in filling basically the investment needs for countries to allow them to achieve their NDC goals. And uh, CPI is managing the Global Innovation Lab for Climate Man uh, Finance, which is a public-private initiative that really focuses on unlocking private investment at scale in emerging economies. And in a little over three, three years, we actually have helped develop solutions uh, that now are already being piloted in various regions of the country. And we've helped uh, fundraise uh, more than 600 million US dollars of concrete projects across uh, renewable energy, energy efficiency, and now slow those in land use. And I do think this is really the way to go to kind of incubate you know, financial solutions that are addressing some of the barriers out there.